Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with fabulous string quartets by Janacek and Pavel Haas. This is great stuff. Featuring the Escher string quartet on BIS. This is a hot disc. This is just wonderful. You know, the Janacek quartets are so cool. They're so passionate, so spontaneous, so completely unlike anything anyone else ever wrote. They're colorful. They're, they're extraordinary, timbrely. They're just, they're amazing. There's no way to explain why they work as well as they do, but they just do. Now, Pavel Haas was a very talented composer, another victim of the Nazis, a Jewish composer who wound up in Theresienstadt. And he wrote quite a few works, um, and some of them are sort of on the fringes of the repertoire. This one... I think the second string quartet, subtitled From the Monkey Mountains, is one of his most remarkable. The finale features a percussion set, wonderfully played here by Colin Curry, a percussion trap set thing with wood blocks and cymbals and triangle and, and bass drum and all kinds of stuff. It's subtitled A Wild Ride. And wild it is. The first movement is a landscape. The second movement is, is like a... a an ox cart and a thing and a something else. And the la the third movement is a slow movement called The Moon and I. It's really evocative, poetic music. And it's recognizably in the school, in the broadest sense of Janicek, in that the elements of Czech folk music are quite obvious, as well as the directness of expression and intensity of, of, of emotion that the music conveys. But Janicek string quartets are just like nothing else in the universe. Now, these performances are really, really, really good. Um, the only issue I had was right at the beginning of the first quartet, subtitled Kreutzer Sonata, after the Tolstoy novel, or novel, novella, short story, it's a short story, whatever it is, the Tolstoy thing. Um, and that's that the opening melody is is played with a certain rhythmic inflection that actually is not the rhythm that Janicek wrote. It's, you know, the tune is dum ba da 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 dum ba da 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 dum da 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 like that. Well, they do it, bum ba da 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 dum ba da 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 bum da da like that sort of. I mean, I'm exaggerating for the sake of the point, but um, it's 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 odd. It's, now, many quartets do that, by the way. You know, they feel that they have to be expressive by, you know, indulging in rhythmic distortions. And that can be expressive. But when you haven't, like, gotten into the piece yet, and nothing's happened with that tune, there's no reason to fiddle with it. And actually, you know, that's just about the only place where they really do. Um, and they're consistent throughout the movement. That's the way they phrase it. So it... it, it it grows on you. you. It only bugs you if you actually know how the thing originally sounded, like when other people do it. And and I will say, there's there's a certain um, there's a certain uh, I don't know oddness about doing it that way that I found disconcerting. But okay, never mind me. It, it it wore off quickly. Why? Because the rest of the performance is just sensational. And the fact of the matter is that, you know, when they're playing as an ensemble, they can't futz around because they have to keep it together. So you don't hear it so much. But the nice thing about these performances, first of all, is they they take their time. They're not slow, they're not boring, but they have a very wide range of tempo contrast, which the music demands, number one. And number two, it allows you to hear all of the cool stuff Janicek is doing with these instruments because, you know, one one part may be ostinatos, they're very quick sometimes. And then there's underneath that, there's something strange happening on the bridge of the instrument, Ponticello with sort of this raspy, like this, and then you've got a melody on top. I mean, it's not counterpoint in the traditional sense, but it has this contrapuntal element, and they're able to play hard without playing ugly. And that is a gift. I mean, string quartets these days, especially ones who are doing like period instrumenty things with classical repertoire, they just play ugly. They think the goal is to uglify the tone. That's not the goal. The goal is to be intense. I mean, if, if Janicek wants to make a raspy, ugly sound, he tells you to, and they do it. But their basic ensemble qualities are beautiful perfectly balanced, incredibly in tune. You know, there's nothing casual about what they're doing, which is wonderful. And then in the Pavel Haas Quartet, well, 
I mean, it, it has a lot of similar qualities. There are moments where you just have to go nuts and they will allow that to happen and other moments where you have to be as ethereal and sweet and, and, and sensitive as you can possibly be. So they get it. They get the range of intensities and emotions that the music embodies. And for that reason, I think this is absolutely one of the great recordings of the Yanache Quartets and the Pavel Haas once you get past the phrasing of the opening tune in the first quartet. After that, you are in business, and I mean it. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.